Hey, what's up? Brent Calmer again from Blue Water VST. We're moving forward with our third part in this series on Native Instruments Reactors New School Ensemble. And in this part, I'm going to show you why it is not necessary for you to run and hide under your bed when you open this interface because these controls are actually pretty straightforward. Just need to go through them systematically. I'll try not to make it too tedious. I know that you just want to get going with your own music. So invest a couple minutes in this and you'll save a lot of time. Uh, we're going to go over just the sequencer controls and specifically just this vertical bar for right now um, because I think there's enough there to get you going and then we can move on to this horizontal bar in a subsequent video and this horizontal piece is actually a lot easier than the vertical piece. So let's start right here with length. Length determines the length of the loop and what we said was that uh, to review briefly is that the pattern input here is going to go over here and evolve based upon these life rules that um, you know part of John Conway's life model. This length determines in steps how often this the performer display is going to go back and start over with this original pattern. So I'm going to lower the BPM a little bit and you'll see that this pattern will emerge every so often based upon the loop length when I hit run. I'm going to hit it now. Let's see, there it is. There it is again. Now, if we alter this loop length, we can do something completely off the wall, you know, in five steps. There it's recurring, but at a, at a, shorter, at a shorter period. Now, another control that is, that is a piece of this puzzle is this step control. And the step control in conjunction with this global tempo determines the rate at which the sequencer is going to cycle through the life phases. Right now we have it set to eighth divisions of the MIDI clock. But as you'll hear, we can raise this. You click and drag up or down. You can raise it. Now it's, it's basically doubled. The rate at which it's going back and looking at the original pattern and then evolving. What we have up here is uh, the loop display. And the loop display essentially shows you graphically how the pattern is evolving based upon what we already talked about as length and step. Now before I go any further I just want to describe this offset display. This, this is uh, a very simple way of changing the start, the start uh, point of the sequencer. So if we have it set to zero, we'll start this over that's how it sounds. Now if we want to we want to add an offset in steps, we can say it add an offset of what did I have it set to before to 3, maybe set it to I don't know, 9. How's that? See, now it starts at a different point. So it's an easy way to add some variation in terms of your start point. I'm going to turn this back down to 0. And let's move down uh, below the step the step control. And below here we have two powerful controls which are the essentially the triggering controls. Run is is set on by default. And what that means is that you hit run, it's as it describes, basically just gonna go. Right. There's another way to do this which is actually very useful for determining how a pattern is going to evolve through time. And that's by turning off run and using this next button. You can cycle through manually and determine how what exactly the next life phase will be. So that can be pretty useful if you're going after very specific rhythmic variations. Moving on, down here we have this copy field. And this copy field looks like it's just kind of your standard, your standard copy, you know, copy and paste. It's actually a little more powerful than that. What this does is it determines the point at which the pattern of the board display is copied over to the performer display. And there are three ways of doing this. Now the one that's set by default is loop, which means that it will copy it over at uh, the beginning of each new loop as we define, as we talked about, uh, by recourse to the length and step controls. But there's another way to do this, which is start. Now what start will do is basically start this pattern and then it will just keep going. It'll go nuts. It won't ever look back to the uh, to the the board display to restart the pattern. It'll just keep going, and and generally what will happen is it will either stop or it will 
it will kind of result in a stasis of some kind of sound. So if we do this, we're gonna hit start, we're gonna hit run, and now you can see that it's not, this pattern is not re-emerging here. It's just gonna keep going. So that can be useful if you just, if you just wanna set it, essentially set it and forget it, and just have it go and do its thing. Now the third way of uh, copying is manual. And what this does is allows you to kind of get yourself into the mix and start triggering things on the fly. So if we hit run, it'll go, but then at any point we can start it over. See, we can start the, you can see it very faintly, beginning every time I click this button, it's starting with the same pattern. If I slow this down, or if I change the step, you can get more of a sense for a very useful live performance feature and a feature that would be great if you're doing some kind of techno stuff that wants, and you want to add in some very performance oriented variation into your mix. Lastly, these two buttons kind of do what, what you would think they do. They copy either from the board display to the performer display or vice versa. And this is useful because sometimes you just want to start over at any point. You can just copy over whatever you have. But the other thing that's cool about this, with this other control, is that you can start this, for example, and then use this, use whatever phase, whatever life phase the performer display is in, and copy that back over and use that essentially as a seed for a new pattern. Very useful. So that covers the vertical part of this. Uh, now you should know essentially how this thing is gonna cycle through the rate, how to start it, how to trigger it, Fool around with these controls, really dig into this and see if you can get some kind of cool rhythmic variations. It's very powerful. Um, and once you wrap your head around it, you'll be ready to, to really dig deep. Next time we'll go into these, this horizontal part, which I have to say is much easier to get than the vertical part. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll get off to the races. All right, take care guys. Brent Kelmer from Blue Water BST. Have a good one, I'll talk to you again soon.